Look, I, I, I think I think pretty much when when I was in political polling and worked for the president in you know '95, you could see pretty much how the the two really I think feed each other, and and particularly the political system of kind of understanding how to take apart issues, how to respond to them, uh, how how really to even deposition your, your your opponents, and how really to be nimble, I think were all things that people look to the political system for and say, gosh, I wish we did things like that. And so I, I certainly think from the 90s on, uh, you know, politics was affecting how corporations would work and deliver their messages. Well, more and more companies found themselves involved in issues, and so they had to bring in people who knew issues. And the people who knew issues were really those people who worked in political campaigns. And so whether you were sitting there just making your software and suddenly you were in the middle of antitrust or you were sitting there, you know, trying to make a drug and suddenly you were in the middle of a pricing, you know, uh, regulation or, de or, or regulation phase, most companies were not prepared for the issues complex to suddenly come to their door. And, and I think they frequently reached out to political people. And now you see companies like, like Amazon and others routinely making sure they have someone who's schooled in issues and politics right at the top of their communications chain. Well, I think first they've learned to, dif to deal with difficult bosses, which is the common, uh, what, what are the things you'll see in politics? Look, the people in politics are, are under stress usually. And so the situation is, typically having to deal with stress quickly and, and communicate. Now, I think there's something else about being in politics, which is that the cycles in politics enable you to gain more experience doing political communications than you will in, in corporate communications for a long time. So you may go through a campaign, a campaign could have 20 different topics, it could have 10 different advertisements, and then when you finish that campaign, you'll go on to another campaign within a year, two years at the most. I think you'll go through 20 product cycles, in essence, in political experience, whereas in a corporation, hey, they're making oil, they're, they're putting oil in cars, they're selling it to consumers. They're oftentimes doing the same thing for 10 or 20 years. And so it's hard to find people with those kinds of experiential cycles. And that's why I think political experience for anyone coming up in communications is essential. Well, you know, political campaigns are very much a, a do-it-yourself kind of thing. And when you're in corporate communications and you're high up in corporate communications, you got agencies, <laughs> you have a team of people, and, and, and political campaigns are actually run in a tightly knit, relatively small group of people. And, and that's really quite different from the corporate experience. And so it is hard usually to, to go the other way. Not impossible, because I think that political campaigns have some things to learn from corporations, like having a solid message that you broadcast over an extended period of time, but it is hard. It definitely has proven the value of well-run political campaigns. And, and, and you, you kind of see, I mean, I mean, I don't know, anytime you listen to any channel now, all you hear is, well, the Trump should have done this, and then he should have spoken about this issue, and Karl Rove will be giving a lecture about the five things that the, that, that the campaign missed. And it, it turns out that if you're schooled in this stuff, you pretty much see that right away, that if Obamacare suddenly has 10% increases, your campaign turns on a dime, and suddenly you, you, you talk about that. And so you, you kind of know that, look, I always used to say that most events will kind of come out as you expected. What a really good political campaign does is it changes events as you, as you expected or didn't expect them to come out. No one really expected Bernie Sanders to be as strong a competitor as he turned out to be. He didn't win, so ultimately he didn't maybe change the course of the, of the river, but, but he, he did in, in many ways make, a, make a statements and galvanize a movement that I think most people thought he was never going to do. Well, I, I think that from a communications perspective, the, the power of televised events, right? Really, advertising has been on the sidelines. And when I grew up in politics, advertising was everything. It was new, it was determinative. Here, the message and what the candidates say, or the counter message, and what, what people find about the candidates, is really the campaign, and it is blasted out through either a mass event or a mass showing that then goes to 100 million people in a day or two. And, and so this will really be remembered for the communications environment in which everybody will know everything 
instantly, and we have never had that before. Uh, you know, as, as I always say, look, I, I certainly expect Hillary to win, and I certainly spent the entire primary season going Trump will never get over 30%, never get over 40%, and definitely won't get over 50%. So uh, I always make a habit, I say, well, look, when I'm actually doing predictions, that's because I'm reading really critically polls, and I think you have to read them really critically. You have to reconcile the state polls with the national polls. You have to have a model of what's happening. To really hit it right, you could be lucky and take a number out of the hat or kind of, kind of as, I, as I say, on a, on a day when it's not raining, say, hey, it's not going to rain today and probably be right. But to really know and really be right takes a lot of study, and I hope we're going to see some really good calls by the networks and the campaigns. Okay, thank you. Thank you.